Hello again. I've been doing further work on the DCPU16 emulator. Notch has posted a kind of reference program about a week ago to test emulators. This little program here. So I've been changing my program to comply with it. Notch has posted the font along with this little te test program in the jar file. I just took his font and built it into my emulator. Also, it uses a different color palette than the one I have been using. It's not a big change, but I thought my program should comply as well as it could with the official emulator. Also, a feature that a lot of other emulators have already had is the ability to change the characters. So you are not stuck with this font, but you can also change the pixels of every character. This is a program showing that. Character map test. Well, it also animates them. The DCPU can only draw characters and to draw sprites like these, you have to set the characters to different tiles of the sprites and then draw them. But the main new feature that I want to show today is a kind of radiation feature. Notch mentioned that there might be areas in space with high radiation or maybe even weapons that you can use that would be able to corrupt the memory of your virtual computer. That sounded very exciting, so I added that feature to see how different programs would behave. Let's have some fun with that. So the feature is activated when you keep pressing F8. It shows little radiation symbols in the corner of the emulator window. And you see the program is behaving strangely. Some random characters are appearing on the screen and, well, only two sprites are showing now and they are leaving traces. It's completely random. When radiation is active, my emulator takes random values and flips random bits in the entire memory. So the program can change, the data can change, and the video memory directly can be changed too. That's where these little random characters are coming from. And yeah, the behavior of the program can change as well. So no, there is no animation anymore. And it's completely random. We can run it again and it will probably change differently. Yeah, the, the path have changed. They have taken a different course. Let's see what happens this time. Again, something different. Let's try different programs. Let's try Notch's test. Neighbor radiation. Yeah, that looks funny, doesn't it? I think it's pretty interesting. I thought just flipping random bits in memory would cause something more boring, like just stopping the program or just spouting gibberish, but you can have some really interesting results. The program takes different patterns, like before these sprites can take different paths and they can even change direction sometimes. It's pretty fun to watch different effects. Let's try this. Let's see what happens here. You can see, well, about the only change right now is different characters appearing in the video output. But maybe you notice that the border is blinking with a different frequency. That came from this radiation effect. Sometimes, oh yeah, now it stopped. I've had it happen that it starts blinking quicker. And this is just because random bits in the program are changed. Pretty interesting, I think. Oh yeah, I made a simple test program to count the amount of radiation. What this program does is it goes over a range in the memory. Normally the memory is set all to zeros and when radiation strikes, uh, different bits in the memory get set to one and this program noti notices that and counts it. It goes over a range in memory and if it finds a byte which is not zero, it sets it to zero and increases the counter. And of course, the program is not immune to the radiation itself, so you can break the program. But as long 
the, the program memory isn't written, it continues counting, but now it's having trouble. It's only counting in the last digit. That isn't supposed to happen. But that's what you get with randomness. It's pretty fun. You can see the character map is changing. It's also just a range in memory, so when you write to it, you can change the characters. And the character changed, background color changed. Now it completely died. Let's test it on this bouncing ball. Sometimes it takes, ah, okay, the ball jumped to the left and it has a different pattern. So yeah, sometimes the radiation takes longer to have effects than other times. Oh, the program stopped. It's completely random, so you might go seconds or even minutes with the radiation just striking empty memory, which is not critical at all. But if you change some bits in the part in which the program resides, then everything goes wrong, like now. Let's try the input program. So let's try radiation. Enable it. And yeah, right now only ran random characters are appearing, but radiation can also hit existing characters and they are their properties can change. Oh, yeah, look at that. Sometimes you can get fun effects like those. Let's try the primes program. Yeah, this is ob obviously a glitch. Oh. Anything can happen. Completely random. This. If this feature really gets into the game with all, all the radiation in space and maybe radiation weapons, it might be a big concern to make your programs resist radiation. I don't know a lot about it, but I think it can be accomplished, at least making safer programs than normal. Well, that's everything I had to show. Bye.